One of the topics that many Seventh-day Adventists want to know is just where are we with respect to the end of time. There's an economic framework that's been most helpful for me to visualize the relationship between finance and the things to come in the future, a theory called the Kondratiev wave. In 1920, a Russian economist named Nikolai Kondratiev observed that the global economy ran in cycles of about 50 to 70 years. There was a growth phase, which is called spring and summer, and then there was a plateauing of the global economy, autumn, followed by economic winter. Now, economic winters were characterized by stock market crashes, debt crisis, banking crisis, often a global depression, and followed by wars and regime changes. As we look at these Kondratiev waves over the past 200 years and compare that against prophetic events, very interesting patterns appear. Perhaps one of the most prominent things that occurred was in the year 1844, the end of one of these economic winters. William Miller had been preaching about the second coming of Christ to take place in 1844, and this coincided with that economic winter. Miller's success in preaching about the second coming of Christ may have been helped by the economic conditions of the time. People are more receptive to spiritual matters, to turn to God and to seek salvation when the conditions around them are very difficult. So this end of this economic wave came with the fulfilling of the 2300 day prophecy. Now the previous wave ended in the year 1789. This was the start of the French Revolution. And as the revolution progressed, it resulted in the arrest and the exile of the Pope in 1798. This was the end of the 1260-day prophecy. And again, there's this close tie between prophecy and the Kondratiev wave. Now, the third cycle ended in the year 1896. This was shortly after the Seventh-day Adventist Church had its 1888 experience. Ellen White wrote that in 1888, the loud cry was starting and that the latter rain was being poured out again. Unfortunately, the church, and in particular its leaders, were not ready for that outpouring of the Spirit, and we didn't see the ultimate fulfilling of the prophecy, which is the second coming of Christ. The next cycle that ended in 1945 was a very catastrophic cycle, which had two world wars, an era which made it very difficult for the gospel work to be finished due to wars and the closed borders. Ellen White had lamented in the year 1903 about what might have been if we had been ready to receive the Holy Spirit. Perhaps it was a cycle that offered no opportunity to finish the work. So we look at the current cycle that we're in today. We're again in economic winter. It started in the year 2000 as the tech bubble burst and the stock market crashed. Since then, governments and central banks have taken extraordinary measures to try and fix the world economy but their efforts have really only resulted in making things worse. But the message I want to give to people today is not so much that we're in an economic winter, but rather that this economic winter perhaps is harvest time for the church, an opportunity to finish the work that God has given us, a time when people are more receptive to the gospel message and are ready to turn to God and seek salvation.